Is God good? Yes, he is. Bringing us from darkness to light, that's a, that's a really big deal. You know, and if you're in this room and you feel like you're going through a really dark place, we serve a God that could really, he's here. His power is here. And he has a, he, his agenda is you. I know sometimes as we get through life and we talk about parenting or people in our lives and have you ever wanted to get the attention of somebody you really love and they're really busy and they seem like they're ignoring you or they're just tuning you out. It's just part of life. But God will never tune you out and God is never too busy and his focus is always you. The Bible says this, that you're the apple of his eye. You're, you're his focus. And when he comes here today, his presence is here, his power is here, his hope is here. And if you are, you know, you're in that state where you say, I'm going through some dark times or I'm going through a dark situation, this is what he does. He'll turn your darkness into light. And he could do it in a moment. Let's say it in a moment. I love, I love as you read through scripture, you'll see a lot, a lot of miracles that he did. And, and then he said, and he would say, and they were healed immediately. And he began to stand up immediately. It was God doing an instant thing that couldn't be done in a lifetime. Couldn't be done by the doctors. Couldn't be done by the psychiatrists. Couldn't be done by some other program. Couldn't be done with the money. But just one encounter with Jesus turns the darkness into light instantly. And I love that. Now, he'll turn your darkness into light. He'll give you insight. He'll give you wisdom of what to do in your situation. He's powerful. Um, but today what we're going to be talking about is, is, is an, a, 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 a principle on uh, how, to, how, to, how to get the abundance of God in your life. And, and there's principles that unlock things in our lives if we could just learn them. And one of the principles in the Bible that's really important for you to know is seed time and harvest. Now, the, all it means is this. It's, it's, it'd be silly for you to expect, expect orange trees when you're planting tomato seeds. And, and life is all about what you sow, you will reap. And if you don't like what you're sowing, then you're the farmer. You must look yourself in the mirror and just say, I need to plant better seed to have a better life. Until you understand this principle, you'll always be a victim and you'll always blame people of why you're not getting the results that you want. And you'll say it's their fault. Um, they're the ones that did it. Or, or you won't ever take personal responsibility. You're just saying it's just the way it is. And God is saying a ground, um, you can't blame the ground um, for not producing. It's the farmer that plants the seed that makes that ground produce. And this is what God is saying. Every one of you have ground. Every one of you have an opportunity. Every one of you have seed. And if you want a better life, you're going to have to pay particular attention to the seed that you've been planting. Now there's good seed and there's bad seed. You must be careful that you're not planting bad seed and expecting a good harvest. There's demonic seed and then there's God seed. Now seeds, there's th different ways to plant seed as we get into this in a minute. Um, you could plant seeds through your words. Don't expect to have a great life when you're planting words over yourself, planting words over your situations and expecting for God to work with bad seed. God doesn't work with bad seed. God works with the seed of his word. When you start saying what God says... When you start saying what God says about your life, what God says about your kids, what God says about your future, what God says about your body, what God says about your finances, and you start saying what God says, you'll start getting what God says. You got to stop saying what the devil told you, what your friend told you, what the society is telling you, what your circumstances is telling you. Stop talking about how big your enemy is, how big your problem is, how sick you feel, how messed up it is, how the world's messed up, the devil's messed up. Of course, all that stuff's messed up, but you'll never change your life until you start planting new seed and it starts with the words you're speaking. 
That's just one way to plant seed. And there's different ways to plant seed. You can plant seed with your money. It's called, it's called um, giving. It's called investing. Uh, don't expect to get a return in a place that you've not invested money. You guys understand that? Are there financial principles to this? Okay. The word of God is seed. Um, your actions are seed. Not just your thoughts. Not just your words. Your actions. Bad actions produce bad results. You guys get this? So uh, people come in, I don't want to go to church. I don't, I'm not into that religious stuff. Okay, stop it. You don't even know what you're talking about. Because what we're talking about is this. God gives us a book and it's an instruction manual for you to start receiving and experiencing the full life that you're looking for. So this Bible is a book full of seeds and it tells you these are bad seeds. These are good seeds. And if you want a great life, these are the actions you should take. These are the action seeds you should take. And these are the ones you shouldn't. Don't expect to have a great life when all you're doing is planting seeds of sin. But, but it's, it feels good. I understand it feels good, but not everything feels good is good. There's some things that feel good. That's why it's called temptation. If it didn't feel good, you wouldn't want to do it. It's called temptation. And just because you feel it doesn't mean you need to do it. And just because you're born with a sinful nature that leans the wrong way, don't allow it to lead you to destruction and mess your life up because, because God is saying, I'm going to deliver you from the bad seed that you've been... This is what God is saying. Some of you, God's saying, you've been a bad farmer. But he's not judging you. He's saying, let's turn this around. I'm going to make you a good farmer. I'm going to give you not only good seed, I'm going to give you the power to plant it. And I'm going to give you wisdom to be a great farmer. Does anybody want to become a great farmer that produces a great harvest? You can produce it. Don't let the world out invest us. Don't let the world out. This is crazy. The world understands that negative words produce negative results. And they've learned this from the Bible. They just don't get Bible credit. But what a shame. A seed works for anybody. Well, I'm a Christian, I know. But don't let the devil has God's seed and using it to prosper on this earth. They're not going to get eternal life, but they're prospering on this earth because they're planting good seed. Why let the world out, come on, out farm us that, and God's the one that gave us the seed. We should be the ones that learn how to farm this thing and start getting the abundance that God has for us. Amen, come on, give God praise. We're going to get to this. This right here will change your life because it, it not it, because what I'm going to teach you works. It really works if you do it. Remember we talked about yes, um, Sunday, you, um, the, um, God's principles only work if you practice them. God's principles only work if you what? You know what God's doing when, he, when you study the Bible? It takes the guesswork out of life. So I say, guess work out of life. I don't have to, I don't have to be concerned how it's going to turn around. See, stop war, stop being concerned about the harvest you received today and start being focused on the seeds you planted today. What's more important is the seeds you planted because the harvest will just take care of itself. If you plant the right seed, it takes the guess work out of this. If someone asks you, what are you going to get? I already know I'm getting oranges. Why? Because I planted orange seeds and I, what's growing? It doesn't look like nothing. Don't you worry about what it looks like. I already know that leaf that's coming out of the ground is an orange tree. And before you know it, I'm going to have an orange harvest that I'm going to get so many oranges, I won't be able to eat them all. So I'm going to have to share with my neighbors. See, God wants you to be a source of blessing. He doesn't want you to be, come on, waiting on someone else's harvest. God says, I've given you seed. Learn how to plant it and start getting a return. Amen. See, if you don't plant seed, this is what's going to happen. You're going to depend on someone else's labor and farming. You'll never have your own harvest. You'll always depend on someone else's. But God's giving you seeds. So we're going to talk about this tonight. Tonight, I don't know how much we'll get to it, but I could spend a seminar on seed planting tonight. But if I were you, I'd really pay attention because if you, if you get this abundant key to unlock your life, it's all over. You're a farmer and you can start producing whatever harvest you want. 
But you got to stop planting good seed and bad seed at the same time. Because this is what happens when you plant a good seed and bad seed. The bad seed are weeds. The good seed is fruit or potential fruit. But you know what happens when we plant bad seed? The weeds choke out the fruit. They choke out the growth. Well, I believe and then I don't believe. I can overcome. I can't. I'm more than an overcomer. I'm so defeated. You, you need to stop this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. You'll never have a victorious life until you get some victory in your mouth, some healing in your mouth. Come on. Some eternal life in your mouth. God created you in his image. He created you just like him. And when God wants to change the world, he uses the seed of his word. Even the earth couldn't be formed without seed. He said it and then his, his, whatever he said that was seed, it came to pass. The word is seed. So we're going to get into this. I know you're standing. I'm standing. We're all standing. Stand up for something. How many are standing for Jesus today? How many are getting something already out of this? We're going to get this. You should be fruitful. You should be abundant. You should be moving from less to more, not from more to less. Why? Because I'm a farmer. I plant, I'm planting more seed now than I did 10 years ago. Why? Because I have a bigger harvest now than I did before. Well, you know, it's just economy. Don't worry about the economy. Just plant, just plant some seed. You have your own economy. And stop accepting, stop accepting lack when God has not created you for lack. Amen? Come on. I know we're like getting our brains back in order. Because you, you've gotten so used to poverty, so used to lack, that we're, we're almost saying, I'm okay with one orange that I didn't produce, that I had to beg for. And God is saying, you're okay with begging for, for something? I, I didn't create you to be a beggar. I created you to be a farmer. I created you to be a great farmer. I created you to produce harvest, to be fruitful, to multiply. How many know that God blessed us to be fruitful and multiply? How many believe that? Our church should multiply. Disciples should multiply. Come on, our wisdom should multiply. Our finances should multiply. Everything we touch starts multiplying because we're good farmers. We get seed and we don't eat it all. We plant some of it. Do you know why poor people remain poor? Is they eat all their seeds. They give, they give all their seeds to Walmart. They don't tithe. They don't give offerings. They don't invest. They don't save. And then they wonder why they remain poor. And understand this. It don't matter how much seed you got. Just plant some of the seeds you got. I, I preached a message 20 years ago. And it said this. Don't eat all your frijoles. Plant some of them. So you have some frijoles for later, for, for in the future. Come on. You eat all your beans. You should plant some of your beans so you can continue eating bean burritos. Someone's planting those beans so you could have your bean burritos after church tonight. Someone's planting those tomato seeds so you could have tomatoes on your, on your hamburger tonight. Someone's planting lettuce so you, I know you don't think about it, but someone's planting so you could eat. And the, the moment we stop physically planting seed, we would starve the whole world and not uh, maybe 30, 30 days we'd be done. Look what happened in COVID. I mean, we just had a problem distribution with just a little toilet paper. You guys went crazy. I mean, we had to go on the gray market, get toilet paper. I was getting, I was, I was calling some of my friends in Mexico. I go, Hey bro. Tolite pe papel. We got you, we got you, we'll get some, man. 
No, but the idea is understand how powerful seed is. I know you're not a farmer. You don't think about this, but you're a spiritual farmer, and you should think about it. There's somebody right now that your, your livelihood, your provision, the next meal that you eat was because there's somebody out there farming, and they're making sure you got something to eat. And God is saying, if they're doing that in the physical, why shouldn't you do that in the spiritual? Planting the seed, planting the word. Come on, let's go. We're going we're gonna to get rid of some demons tonight of victimization. We're going to get rid of some demons of poverty here. We're going to get some rid of some demons that make you think you can't do nothing. And God has said, I've given you my word and I've, I've changed my mind. It's been like this from the beginning of time. I give you seed time and I give you harvest. I give you seed bearing plant so you could have some food. Now, God's not going to plant it for you. That's, understand this. God will plant, but he's not going to plant all your seed for you. He gives you seed. You got to plant. All right, sit down for a second. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Everybody online. I know we got Arizona online. I don't know. We might have Pomona. I don't know. Pomona. We got everybody online. Okay, so let's look at this scripture. And this is just an intro scripture. And it's Zechariah 8, 12. It says, look what God says. For I am planted seeds. Who's planted seeds? That God created his, in his image? This is what he's saying. I've created my image. I'm a seed planter. I need you to be a seed planter. Okay? I'm planting seeds of peace and prosperity. Now, this is very good. So if you plant seeds of peace and prosperity, what is God trying to harvest? Peace and prosperity. What is he trying to harvest? Whatever he plants, he already knows his seed. So, I already, so, so you ask God, God, what's, come, what's coming next? I already know. I already know the seeds I planted, peace and prosperity. Well, it doesn't look very peaceful. He goes, it, goes, it don't matter like what the dirt looks like. It don't matter what the situation looks like. It don't matter what the circumstance looks like. It don't matter what the doctor said. That will have nothing to do with it. The question is, this is the idea. I'm telling you something. I planted seeds of peace and prosperity. And since I planted seeds of peace and prosperity, that's what they're going to harvest. That's what they're going to harvest. This is what God is doing right now in our church. This is not a series for us to just go through another series. God is saying I'm planting some seeds because I'm ready to get a harvest in my people. I'm planting seeds of peace and prosperity in my people because my people need to prosper. My people need to have peace in their lives so they could go ahead and give it to somebody else. When God plants seeds of peace and prosperity, he's looking for a harvest of peace and prosperity. That's what he's doing. Say, say it with me. I receive the seed. Do you? Because I understand you got to start receiving some seed. You're being exposed to a lot of scattered seeds of the devil all day long. I mean, nonstop conversations that are demonic. And you think they're innocent. They're not innocent because the people that you're speaking with have demonic seed in them and you're hearing them and you're talking about them and you're agreeing with them. And when you're agreeing with them, you're receiving their seed. Some of the seeds that they're planting in you actually are laced not with PCP. They're laced not with fentanyl. They're laced with demons. These aren't just words. Words aren't, words aren't neutral. You guys understand that? Their words are either good or they're bad. That's why there's such thing as curse words. And there's words of blessing. Don't expect to be cussing all the time and have a great blessed life. You're not going to have a spiritual life until you start speaking spiritual. You know, I, I heard someone, I, I don't even want to get onto this nonsense. But once in a while I have to get into the nonsense. I mean, I mean there's a pastor that, that now is saying God told him to say cuss words. Like, God told me to say cuss words because he wants me to relate to the people. That's like, God told me to be a demon so I can relate to demons, you know. Understand this, that's not God. Bitter and sweet water should not come out of the same well. 
That means you, sh you, sh you need to be cleaning up your seed, not dirtying your seed. The, the, the enemy's trying to trick him because he's trying to change his harvest in the future. And he knows this. If I could change his seed, I don't have to worry about it. I change his harvest. See, Satan is not a planter of seed. You're a planter of seed. He just uses the seed of your mouth to destroy your life. Well, let's keep going. For I'm planting. Who's planting? God's planning right now. A piece of peace and prosperity among you. Where? Among who? You got to receive it. Say, I receive it. I receive. Say with me. I receive seeds of peace and prosperity in my life right now. Amen. Do you receive that? Start expecting for harvest of peace and prosperity. You need to start learning how to guard your seed. You got to water your seed. Someone say water your seed. You know what water seeds, what watering your seed is? It's keep speaking the word over it. You got to protect your seed. You got to weed around your seed. If you're going to produce a harvest. So if God tells you peace and prosperity are planted in you, you need to start speaking. I'm excited because peace and prosperity is my next season. Because the Lord has planted seeds of peace and prosperity in my life. So anything that doesn't match up with that, I don't accept and I don't repeat. Stop describing your condition and start describing your expectation. This is what he says. I don't even know how far I'm going to get here. I'm going to have to preach. I don't, I don't even know what's going on here. <laughs> the grapevines will be heavy with fruit. That means the harvest that's coming in is going to be a heavy harvest. It's going to be a healthy harvest. It's going to be abundant harvest. He's not saying it's going to be light with fruit. It's going to be heavy with fruit. That means each branch of your life is going to be producing heavy fruit. God's not saying just one branch. He's saying every grapevine, every branch that's connected to me is going to bear fruit. Is anybody ready for your finances, your health, your kids, your marriage? Every area that's connected to the Lord and connected to the vine is going to produce heavy fruit. Are you ready for a shift? Come on. And the reason we need a shift because we're in the last days. And I could almost sense that right now we're going into economic, like, like, a storm as a country, not just a country, as a world. And it's already hidden right now. It's just the beginnings of the storm coming in. It's going to get worse. So, but that's why God is saying, we got to make sure you guys are prepared to get through any storm because you planted the right seed. The reason we're going through an abundant series, you're not going to depend on the economy. You're going to depend on my favor. You're going to depend on my word. And you're going to start saying what I say. So you start getting what I want you to get. Now, if you're here for the first time, don't, don't trip because this is the way life is. What you sow is what you reap. You know what the world calls it? Karma, but it's a lie. They're just rewriting what the Bible says. You will reap what you sow. That's all it means. They, they say like, what goes around comes around. They're saying the same thing. What you, reap, what you sow is what you reap. That is a fact. Now, don't expect, don't expect to dog everybody and not get dogged. That's why if you could be violent. You could be the baddest guy in the hood and knocking everybody out. But there's going to be a day you're going to get knocked out because what goes around comes around. Right? You might think you're the player right now because you're young and you go out on all your girlfriends. And, you, and then when you get married, you go out on your wife. And, and understand this, you're going to reap what you sow. So you better stop it right now. Okay, that's just extra. I don't know who's doing that. Someone's doing that. You better stop. Because you're being a bad farmer right now. And we know like porn, I mean, you can't sit there and watch porn without the seeds of lust in you. That produce a harvest of lust in you. And it goes deeper and deeper into perversion. I mean, so, and it visits you at night. It visits you in your dreams. You're, you're a slave to you. Can't, I mean, you can't even look at the sisters in church without thinking dirty thoughts. And, and the problem is, is your, your mind is full of lustful seeds that you planted. You don't have a lust problem. You got a seed problem. It's time for you to repent of those seeds. That means uproot every one of them and say, I'm done with that. And I'm going to start planting some holy seed. I'm going to spend some time in the word of God. I'm going to spend more time in church and stop seeing. Some of us don't like coming to church. I'll tell you why. Because the seed that's in you is fleshly. It's worldly. It's demonic. It's not godly. 
So you got to get that appetite out of there and say, I'm going to uproot this stuff because I want a new life and I want a new future and I want new desires. So I'm going to have to expose myself to new seed, God's seed, so I get new desires that are, that are growing in me. Right? Tell me I'm not right. Sure you're right, Pastor. Sure you're right. All right. The earth will produce. It's, this is what God's saying. The earth will produce its crops. The heavens will release the dew. What he's saying, it's going to be a perfect, like everything's going to be working in order. You have to understand that this was a time before there were sprinklers. Right now, uh, a farmer could depend, whether it rains or not, he could depend on sprinklers. He has a water source. But back in these days, if you were going to produce a harvest, you not only need to plant seed, you need to pray for rain and dew. Lord, because if you don't cause it, I'm going to do, this is what it means. When you are like under God's favor and his blessing, what you do prospers. Because God rains his favor on it. God rains his blessing on it. And this is what happens. What you do works. So you're planting seed, but you're also producing a harvest because the rain comes. You could only do the planting. God's the only one that could cause the rain. And he's the only one that could cause the growth. But he's saying if you don't plant, nothing's going to happen. But this is what's great. When God tells you to say something, he gives you his word, and you do what he tells you to do, the rain comes with the seed. Say it with me. The rain comes with the seed. When God speaks, the power comes with his word. When God, with the, when God says to Lazarus, uh, come out of the tomb, rise up, the power to re resurrect Lazarus comes with his word. It, with his word comes the favor. With his word comes the breakthrough. With his word comes the miracle. All God is saying, will you keep my word in your mouth? We're going to have to learn how to talk again. You understand that? And, and there was an old saying, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. And this is what we're saying. If you can't say nothing right, just shut up. Stop commenting on every negative thing you see and every negative person. You see what the, do you see what she wore to church? What, how is that going to bless you? Well, you're going to get your little gossip friends together? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's, she, you know, she's, ooh. Can you believe it? And the guy said, like, why are you judging her? All you're going to do is reap judgment on yourself. You're wasting time. That has nothing to do with the future. People that don't have a life talk about people. People that have a life talk about vision. They talk about harvest. They talk about what's coming. Come on, get a life. Stop talking about your past because if you keep planting seeds of your past, you're going to get repeats of your past. Keep, stop talking about your haters. Stop talking about who hurts you. Stop talking about what's wrong. Stop talking about the economy. Stop talking about politics. Stop talking about, come on, stop talking about how you feel. And it's time for you to start saying, I don't care how I feel right now. I believe it right now that my best days are ahead of me because all things work together for good. All this mess is going to work out for my benefit because I'm planting the seeds of God through speaking the word of God. For real? Yeah. Once more, he just keeps on going. I will cause the remnant of Judah. And all he's saying when he's talking about remnant, he's talking about the chosen few. Stop trying to be like everybody else, talk like everybody else. And understand, you're not supposed to. You're in this world, but you're not of it. People should tell by the way you talk, the way you think, the way you flow, the things you do. You're different. You know that I'm different. But I was just like you, and I'm not no better than you. But there was a day in my life that I heard the word of God, and I received that seed, and it caused me to become a brand new person. And I just kept exposing myself to the word of God, and it's changing my language, it's changing my thinking, it's changing my actions, and it's changing my life. I used to be in lack in a lot of areas, but not anymore. I learned that I could start farming good seed, planting good seed, and producing abundance in my life. 
I'm going to tell you this. Every word you speak is seed. I want you to think about it when you're ready to let a word out this week or tonight. Is it worth saying? Because what you're planting, you're going to get. That's what the Bible says, the life and death in your tongue. What he's saying is, stop, stop taking your words lightly. Stop taking your life lightly. Stop allowing thoughts to meditate on, meditate on demonic thoughts. It's not just words you speak, it's words you meditate on. Your brain, your brain and your heart are the soil. And the enemy wants to plant his thoughts in your mind. To get into your heart. Now, it goes from the heart and it takes root. In, I mean, it goes in your mind, the, the seed, and then it takes root in your heart. That means it becomes a thought that becomes a stronghold. It becomes so strong, it becomes you. And you can't fight it. And that's why then when the temptation comes with that negative thought, that neg the anger, the jealousy, whatever, the spirit of religion or anything that hits you, you just can't resist it. You start letting it out, start bubbling out. And the Bible says from abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. All of a sudden what's rooted in your heart comes out of your mouth and you're in cycles. You do good and then you go right back to the roots. You got to uproot that thing tonight. You, you allowed it to be planted. You're going to have to root that thing. Because I tell you, when negativity gets in your heart, you become a negative person. I hate that person. I hate that. I hate that. Hate's in your heart. And not only do you hate them, you start hating yourself and you start hating everybody. You just become a hater. You farm and you're planting, please, planting a whole harvest of hate. And you keep getting it back and you wonder, how come no one likes me? Because you plant seeds of hate. The heat, seeds of anger, seeds of discontentment, seeds of depression, seeds of fighting, seeds of quarreling, seeds of negativity, seeds of complaining, seeds of judging others, and then you expect to have this great life with bad seed. It's just everybody, they're all hypocrites at the way. Everybody's hypocrite. No, 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 no. It's just your harvest. That's all it is. How come there's people here that all they can see is good? Like, oh my God, this is the best church in the world. You know why? Because they're planting good seed. Oh my God, oh God, God, why'd you bring me? I don't even deserve this. Right? Why? Because all they could see is harvest that they're planting. They don't see the, all the rest of them because that's not their life. That's why you got two people in the same church with completely different harvests. And it's not that the seed that they're being given. I don't feel like I'm being fed. No, you're not receiving the seed. Look at this. Once more. Say once more. I will cause the remnant of Judah and Israel to inherit these blessings. Once more. What he's saying, I've done it before and I'm going to do it again. But, but why inherit blessings? Because that's what I want my people to have. I want my people. Do you know the first thing that God said over man? The Bible says, God bless them. First thing he said, God bless them. To be fruitful and multiply and reign and to fill the whole earth. He blessed them with the ability to be fruitful, to produce, to invest and get a return, multiply. That means that when you're planting seeds, you're not going to get a seed back. You're going to get multiplication back. I blessed you to be able to multiply. And then I, I bless you to be able to reign, not to be dominated. He goes, I didn't create you to be a slave to sin, a slave to depression, a slave to fear, a slave to your past, a slave to your condition. He goes, I, I came, I didn't create man to be a slave, to be dominated by your anger, uh, an emotion. I didn't create you to be like that, by your religion, by your person. I didn't create you to be dominated. I created you to dominate over the devil, dominate over sin. Come on, dominate over life. And it's not a negative word. That means that you're not in a position that you're a slave to sin. You're in a position that you're ruling, you're dictating. The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means whatever you allow on earth shall be allowed. God says, I don't allow you. God says, I don't allow it. And then you say, I don't allow it either. But God says, okay, well, let's get rid of it. Could it be some things you're agreeing with 
that you should be actually getting rid of? You got to be, watch your words. This is my cancer, it's my depression, my fear, my anxiety, my, my cirrhosis, my, 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 my marriage problem, my, my, taking all kinds of ownership over your nonsense. I don't, that ain't my, that ain't my cirrhosis, that's the devil's cirrhosis. That ain't my depression. That's the devil's depression. He's the one's depressed. That's not my hopelessness. That's, that's his poverty. That's his mess. I don't receive it because God promised that he would supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I receive my full inheritance. Come on, does anybody want to receive the seed of the word? You're going to have to meditate on this. Let's go. What does God want you to inherit? These blessings. Someone say blessings. blessings. Now, this is, what, this is what it says. Among the other nations, that just means the other people, Judah and Israel became a symbol, symbols of a cursed nation. Um, this is the idea, is that as we begin to live a life apart from God, we, people, we start being known for being cursed people. Cursed means that nothing you do works. You're frustrated. It looks like you're in a downward spiral. And people know you by your failures. They know you by your addictions. They know you by your past. They know you by your inadequacies. They know you by your lack. They, they know you by your, by your, in your family. They, they, they know you by your gang. They know, they know you by your promiscuity. They, they, they know you by your sinful lifestyle. And they also see the curses on you. And he's saying, you're known for that. He goes, but we're going to end that tonight. We're going to end this thing. And God is saying, I didn't create you to be cursed. I created you to be blessed. And these cycles that you've been in, that you've been known for, God is saying, you're not supposed to be known as an alcoholic. You're not supposed to be known as a womanizer. You're not supposed to be known as someone that can't keep their word. You're not supposed to be known as a person with no integrity. You're not supposed to be known as a person that's a liar. You're not supposed to be known as a person that's a cheat. We're going to end that tonight. People think that about you, but they don't know what I'm saying about you tonight. God is saying, I'm going to start over with your life by planting my seed and my word in you. Tonight, the frustration and the hindrance is going to end in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise if there's something's going to end today. You're going to get a new identity. People are going to know you for something different. Like, what happened to you? There's going to be a boyfriend that he should just call you. And you said, oh, oh, what, 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 what do you want? Where, 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 when, 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 where, where, where? He wouldn't even take you for a happy meal before he took you to bed. Because you were like, oh, I need you. Uh, can I, uh, I need some sexual healing. But there's something happening tonight. You're not going to be known as that girl that just call, you call me up and I come. I'm not, I, I am not, I, I don't belong to you. I belong to God. And this cycle ends tonight. I'm a holy woman of God. And the next person I sleep with is going to value me and is going to put a ring on my finger. That's just the way it's going to be. I've changed this thing. I've changed my values. I've changed the way I walk. I'm not going to be known like that. God's changing my identity. God's changing my name. God's changing my character. And he's doing it through the seed of his word. People are going to say, what happened to you? You're going to say, Jesus. That's what happened to me. Drug addict is going to call, the drug dealer is going to call you. Say, what, 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 what we got today? What we got? What, what you need? What you need? Say, I don't need nothing. What, what happened to you? Are you getting something? Are you getting it for somewhere else? Nah, man. I got set free. I, I heard a word that got, that I heard a, I got a seed that, that, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I heard that I was not created to be dominated by you and give you my whole paycheck and ruin my life and die and go to prison. I'm done with that lifestyle and it starts tonight. It's up to you. You're not with us no more? Nah. And I just hope you come with me. Because I found out you don't have to live that way anymore. Come on, have some dignity. Have some honor. Come on. If, if God, come on, if God has called you, why don't you honor him and say, God, I receive your calling on my life. Change me, Lord. Do whatever you need to do in my life.
You became symbols of a cursed nation. Crazy. Symbols of a curse. Uh, you got to be careful that you're not so familiar with your curse that you love it. We're getting in a time where people are like, yeah, that's who I am and what? Okay. Okay. So you're proud of, you're proud of your curse. Well, as long as you're proud of your curse, you'll never be, uh, you'll never, you'll never stop being under that curse. But God's coming to you today. He says, you can change. And I know you're scared. Saying, can I change? I know you can't change. But the seed of God, the word of God, this is what he got to say. This is what I'm saying. I'm going to remove that curse. I'm going to make you new. I'm planting seeds of prosperity and peace in your emotions, in your life. Come on. Does anybody want it right now? Things are shifting in the spirit. Let's end it. But no longer. Say it with me. But no longer. But no longer. One more time. But no longer. But no longer. You got to say that. You got to agree with God on that one. Even if you're here for the first time, you know some things that you don't want anymore. If you don't start saying no longer, this is what I've learned. If you can't say, you'll never have it. Until you're done, you're not done. I mean, everybody around you wants to get you to get done. And they say, you're going to go through another cycle of this craziness? Well, I'm not done yet. Okay, well then go. Now, I'm going to tell you, when someone says that, you let them go. You don't beg them to stay. You say, okay, well, go on, go on your crazy cycle and you're going to get burnt. And when you come back, I hope you're done. Not that you don't care about them, it's you can't fix them. It's people you're going to pray for, you're going to let them know what the Word of God says, but they reject it. They say, I'm not done, I'm not ready, I don't know. So you're not ready. What is it going to take for you to get ready? What is it going to take? I mean, because right now it looks like you should be ready. Well, I'm not ready. Okay, with the gold, another, do another cycle of this nonsense. Your life is spiraling downward, and I hope by the next cycle you come to your senses if you get one more chance. But get this together. Right now, the way you're, the track that you're on, you're planting bad seed, you're going to get bad results, and you're ruining your life, you're ruining your kids, you're ruining everyone around you. When are you going to say, no longer? It's up to you. Well, I just want just one more puff. <sighs> Tell you, one more puff. That means you're not done yet. So what you're doing is canceling out this whole blessing on your life. You're choosing your curse. And I, this is what the problem is. The price that you pay is going to be more than you expect to pay. Or you're going to be willing to pay. Let's finish this reading. Praise the Lord. We're, we're talking to somebody. But no longer. The, the way it says, now I will rescue you and make you both a symbol. I'm going to change your symbol. I'm going to change your name. I'm going to make you both a symbol and a source of blessing. Not only are you going to be a symbol, I'm going to make you a source. Where there was lack, there will be no lack. Where there was a curse, now there will be blessing. People will begin to know you as a symbol and a source of abundant blessing. Why? Because I've said tonight, I will bless you with peace and prosperity. So don't be afraid, be strong, and get on with the rebuilding. Get on with your bad self, with the rebuilding of your life. We're build, come on, let's get on with the rebuilding of the temple. That means you're the temple of, the, of God. Let's get on with the rebuilding of your life. Let's forget about what it's been, and let's start rebuilding off these rocks. Uh, come on, these ruined, all this rubble. God is saying, I can work with this. Let's, get, let's be done with that. Let's start a new chapter and let's start rebuilding from here for the rest of your life. Does anybody receive that tonight? Give God some praise. Come on. All right, let's all stand up. God is good. Everybody online, you can stand up too. Unless you're in your car, just stay right there. I tell you guys, I love you and I'm telling you, this word just came from God. A matter of fact, I got, I mean, I just, this scripture right here that I read to you right now, I didn't read until right now. And I'll tell you why. Because um, Christian, 
was, was um, last night God woke him up and he gave him this scripture about seed. But the title of my sermon, he came to me, he ran in because I, 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 when I came in this first time we talked and, and, and the, the sermon was unlocking the abundant life through God's seeds. And, and so he got a, this scripture on seeds. He goes, when I, when I saw you, I sent him the copy of the message like five minutes before service starts. And he read it. He came up to you as soon as I came in. He goes, I just can't believe God woke me up last night. And if you weren't here to preach, I was going to preach. I go, I'm here. And, and what ended up happening, he gave me the scripture, I just downloaded it. And this is supposed to be my intro. And I, we got so much to cover. But we're going to talk, I don't know when, but hopefully we'll get to it. Three truths about God's seeds. And we'll talk about how to like plant seed. Well, I want to get into that. But idea today is first receive the seed of the word of God in your life. Receive the life that God wants to give you. And be willing to give up the curse. Stop talking about how bad things are. I'm just telling you, you got to be careful that you're not on a, a, autopilot on negativity. Or you're on autopilot with the devil's not even messing with you anymore because you t- think like he already trained you. And you got to be done with this. And, so, and you're using your sin to numb your pain. And you're like in a cycle of destruction and misery and suffering and and midnight calls and all kinds of stuff. And you're like, oh, I got to go to a party. Hopefully somebody sees value in me and picks me up and takes me to their bedroom. <laughs> I'm, I, I, we're laughing, but that's how we think. And then we go like to a Halloween place and, and get a dress over there. That's not even, it's not even a dress. It's supposed to be a, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's for kids. Tricks is for kids, and you're like, this, it don't fit you. It don't fit you. <laughs> but why are you wearing that? Because you're insecure. You're hurting. You're broken. I'm not saying we're all there. You know, we just try to, like, yeah, I just need attention. And no, but bad attention is good. It's, good as, it's better than no attention. And you're ruining your value. And you're awesome. And you're powerful. And you know what's so great? God redeems you. He makes you brand new. He forgives you of your past. And, and I, I, this is what's cool about it. He'll make you a renewed virgin. So after you're born again, you're brand new. No one's ever been with you. You can say, I'm a brand new virgin. Are you a virgin? Yes, I am. Thought I wasn't? I'm waiting until I get married too. Amen. Come on. Get your new identity in Christ. Okay. So what's we're going to do? Christian, why don't you close this out? But I want you to respond to this. If you want a new life today and you're saying, God, a matter of fact, let's just do this right now. If you're saying no longer, something has to end here. The cycle has to end here. And it's different levels. I'm not, we're at different levels. It could be a cycle that you're in. You say, this has to end. And you say, no longer, I'm done. I'm receiving this word. I want you to leave your seat and come up here real quick. No longer. It's a no longer. It's almost like when I said no longer, you felt like this has to break. There's something like holding me back. It has to end tonight. Just come forward real quick. No longer. It, it, something has to shift in your life. Nothing's going to change until you take action. You got to say, I receive this word. How do you know you receive a word? You're taking action. You're saying tonight it has to shift. Tonight things have to change. The cycle has to be broken tonight. The curse has to be lifted tonight. I'm going to surrender my whole life to Jesus. I'm receiving his word. Someone right now needs to repent. You need to repent of the thoughts you've been having and the negativity in your mouth. Who needs to like give their mouth to Jesus again? Like you say, I give my mouth to Jesus. Come forward. I'm ready to give. I'm giving my, I'm giving my life, but my mouth. I'm going to like, this is how I plant seed. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. Now the greatest seed, I'm proud of every one of you. Some, some, you just hearing a response. I'm, I'm ready for change right now. I'm ready for change. No longer, no longer, no longer, no longer, no longer. Who else? Come on. There's a married couple. You guys need to be up here. You're mad at each other, but you need to be up here. And you guys say, come on, let's go. No longer. We got to end this drama tonight. And I know, come on, I know we hurt each other, but that's why we need the seeds of forgiveness. We're done with this in the name of Jesus. Come on. I, I forgive you. Let's get going. Let's get moving. Let's start rebuilding what's been destroyed. Who cares what you've done? 
Well, does God care? God says, no, I don't care because I love you. I'm not here to bring up your past to judge you. I'm here to bring up the stuff that doesn't work and so you can see it and then turn from it. So I'm done with that. And after you talk, we talk about this, it just makes sense. Like, what? What am I doing? All right? I'm not going to be bound by nothing anymore. We're going to break the spirit right. Right now, you got to tell the spirit, like, there's a spirit of suicide that's been talking to you and he's staying there because you keep talking to it. And you got to break up with it tonight. You got to get up here right now and say, no longer are you going to allow you to speak to my life and get me depressed and have these conversations and fantasizing about death. No longer. I rebuke you. I command you to get out of my life. You got to say it. Now, what I'm saying is no one can want it more than you online. No one can want it more than you. If the Holy Spirit's talking to you, let the Holy Spirit move. Stop resisting. Stop claiming your, it's my depression. Stop doing that. It's not my depression, it's the devil's depression. I rebuke that depression. I receive the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I receive that. That's the seed. Do you understand? You got to start resisting it. It's not necessarily, it's all of a sudden going to go just in one shot. But you got to let it go. Push against it. It will leave. But if you keep talking about it and thinking about it and meditating on it, you're feeding it. Stop it. We got to end it. Stop going over your failure, failures over and over. Okay, one last thing. I want to make sure everybody here is saved. You have eternal life. Okay. Um, this is as real as it gets. There's going to be a day that you breathe your last breath on this earth. And after you breathe your last breath on this earth, either you're saved or you're not. Saved from what? Judgment for your sins. Either you get set free from your sins or you die in it. There's some people going to die in their misery, die in their addiction, die in their rebellion, die in their anger. They're going to die in their sin and they think it's over and at the end they're going to die and then die forever separated from God and it's called the misery of hell. So stop playing around with your life. There's signs that right now that are stressing you out. There's things that you know are wrong and God is saying, see all those feelings that you're having? They're there to let you know there's something wrong. And God says, they're there to let you know something's wrong, it's okay, but I want to help you. It's okay, my daughter, we, we were there to... 12, 1 o'clock in the morning last night with one of my daughters in the hospital. She has severe pain. And that pain made her go to the doctor. Which is good. Right? Because if there's something really serious and they're thinking it could be appendix rupture, um, they did all kinds of CAT scans. She's probably there tonight trying to figure out what's going on. But the idea it doesn't matter what it is, there's pain because there's something wrong. Some of the pain you're going through is not, you're not supposed to be comfortable with it. You're supposed to, it's just, you know, there's something wrong. Come here, come here. Let me help you. It's time to come to the doctor, the great physician. Give your life to Jesus. So I'm going to ask this last question. I'm done. And we're going to pray. And we're not done yet. We're going to pray. But if you're saying, Pastor, if I were to die right now, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Or you say, I think I'd go to heaven because I'm a pretty good person. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you get into heaven because you're a good person. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we're all sinners, every single person. And the person that says he's not sinned is a liar. And the truth is not in him. We've all sinned. And the wage for the sin is death. Eternal separation from God, misery, destruction, and addiction. And God says, I want to set you free. And the only way to get set free is to understand that Jesus died. He suffered for your sins. That means we're the ones that sinned. He took on our punishment. We did the crime. He did the time. We did the crime. He paid the bail. He, we did the crime. He took on our punishment. And if you believe that, he was innocent, but he took on your, he loves you that much. I'll pay the price for you. And if you receive that, you can be forgiven tonight. You can be set free tonight. And you can receive eternal life tonight. But if you don't receive Jesus, you don't have eternal life. And you're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I, I've ever received Jesus. If you never have, tonight's your night. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. So if you're in this room and you're not sure if today were your last day you go to heaven, say, Pastor, I don't know. I'm not sure. When I count to three, I say, I want to make sure. I want you to raise your hand. I want to make sure. I want to make sure I'd go to heaven if I die. If, if you're not sure, you need to raise your hand. One, I want to make sure. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want a new beginning. I want eternal life. You can have it. It's a free gift. God's giving it to you. One, two. You say, I'm not sure. I want to be sure. Two, three. Raise your hands all this building. I want to be sure. Right, awesome. Proud of you guys. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here with me. That's okay. I'm not going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray. Come on. This, come on. Let's give them a hand. Come on. People are giving life, people up here too. 
Okay, online. Raise your hand. Stand up where you're at. Okay, proud of you. Proud of you. We love you guys, okay? This, everybody just come. Every, you raise your hand, just come up here. Don't let fear stop you. That's what I said. Look what it says right here. Don't be afraid. Be strong and let's get on with the rebuilding. Let's get on with it. I should have titled it. Let's get on with it. All right. We're going to pray. I'm going to let you know this. We love you guys, every one of you. But this is the beginning. Someone say this is the beginning of rebuilding. It's great. I love it. It's the beginning of the rebuilding. You're going to be saved tonight, and then we're going to start rebuilding everything. Everything that's been destroyed, God says, I'm going to help you rebuild it. You're thinking, that can't be rebuilt. He goes, you can't do it, but I can. You guys got that? We're going to rebuild this. I love it. I love it. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Pray, pray, pray with me, everybody. Just bow your heads for just a second. Just kind of close off the world and just pray with me. Say, repeat this. Say, Jesus, I give you my life tonight. I believe that I'm a sinner. I've done it my way. I've planted bad seed in my life and the life of, lives of others. Forgive me, Lord. Set me free from living life my way. I'm done. I receive the seed of your word tonight. That you would save me. That you would forgive me. That you'd give me peace. That you'd prop, prosper me. And set me free from the cursed life that I've been living. And make me a symbol and a source of goodness. A blessing. Of power of love of Jesus. Today, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I receive the free gift of eternal life. And devil, I'm done with you. It's over. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit, every thought of darkness, to leave me now in the name of Jesus. Depression, go. Addiction, go. Unworthiness, go. Fear, go. In the name of Jesus, I'm free. Fill me now, Lord, with your gift of your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Tonight's your night. Just receive the seed of the good word of God. Live for Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you this. Give us a year of your life. Come to church every time we're open. This Saturday we're going to have, we're going to do the, the Thanksgiving uh, uh, lunch and dinner, feeding the least, less, less fortunate, give, giving some turkey, turkeys and stuff away. We'd love for you to join us there. But Sunday morning, be here because we're going to continue the rebuilding process on Sunday. You're going to receive words that you need to rebuild your life. God bless you. We love you. We want to make sure we pray for everybody. You need prayer, come on this way. Remember this, if God's for you, there's no one to come against you. Watch your seeds as you're planted to over there tonight. Even when you get in your car, plant the right seeds. We love you. God bless you.